nothing Nebraska. Chris Brown's got it teed up. Jure Butler and Joe Jarzinka are back deep. Gonna have to get deep on this one. Butler, six yards in, had a notion and took a knee. So Washington will start offensively from its own 20. And the big eaters up front of the Chile starting lineup. Silvers, Coates, who's moved from tackle to guard. Hutt, Ward, and Dalen on the front five. Dane Looker back, as Gary said. Favorite receiver so far for Brock Heward with Hooker, Davis, and Harris. And in the backfield, Brock Heward at quarterback, Marie Shaw, and Pat Conniff is the fullback. We may see a four-wide receiver group to start the game. Let's see how they bring them up. Virtually a four-wide receiver group because John Westra, an extra tight end, is in the slot on the left side. Now he comes in tight, and it's first down Washington from its own 20. Play fake, Heward, pressure right away, has it batted in the air, knocked his own pass away, a good move, or it would have been a loss of 15. And right off the bat, Chad Kelsey putting some heat on Brock Heward. Washington comes out trying to open up this field, a quick play, and neck, naked to the outside, get the ball to one of those tight ends, and there's a little bit of uh, leadership, and a little bit of experience not catching that ball, because that would have been a big loss. So second down at 10, no harm done. Although maybe to the psyche of the quarterback, who's already seen his first pass banded up in the air. Now Brock will work from the shotgun. Handed off inside to Shaw. Flags down immediately, which would indicate holding where it went slow. And Eric Johnson made the tackle. A swarming Nebraska defense as we take a look. Up front, Kelsey's already batted a pass. Ward and Kaiser inside. Mike Rucker, their rush in, who could be on his way to an All-American season. Shaw, Jay Foreman, Eric Johnson, who made that last tackle, the linebacking core, and the leader of the secondary, really the leader of the defense, Mike Brown, already their leading tackler. He had an interception last week. Sweeney Walker and Ralph Brown round out the secondary, but we'll also see quite a bit of Clint Finley today. He has not played since uh, being injured a couple of weeks ago, but could be back in the lineup at any time. Well, long-time Nebraska defensive coordinator Charlie McBride hopes that we see a lot of Clint Finley because that really was the missing link against Louisiana Tech when they racked up all those yards. Two people playing out of position, and I think there right. was a lot of confusion that day. Rucker, who's been battling injuries, only played one series against Cal two weeks ago. That bye week last week got Nebraska much healthier. They didn't play a week ago today. Three penalties already on Washington, the last of which has backed them up to the 10-yard line. Second down and 20. Brock Heward stands at his own five. Again, they try the quick opening draw on his Shaw. He got two, and that's it. Barry Reynolds from the secondary made the play. Shaw does not have the kind of speed or explosiveness of Rashad Sheehy, the man he's trying to replace. Well, and I think that was the difference in the year last year for Washington. Things was going, things were going around pretty well until they lost Sheehy last year. You know, they survived the Nebraska game. They really survived Brock Heward's injury because Tuyasa Sopo did so well. But when they lost the speed from Sheehy, I still don't think this Washington offense is Three wideouts, including Looker, who's in a slot left. Third down and 18. Nebraska pins their ears back. Trying to get some pressure on Heward. He's going deep. And out there and overshot him by about five yards. Andre Desichure had a step back there. But it's incomplete and Washington will have to kick. For Nebraska to tack on another touchdown. And you can see we have a windy day as Chris Brown is going to have to have someone hold the ball for him so it doesn't blow off the tee. You know, we do so many talk shows now, and Dan, since I've come into town, I've done a couple talk shows, and the real talk in Lincoln was how rusty would Bobby Newcomb and, and D'Angelo Evans be for this football game? Why don't see any rust? <laughs> I said rust, it's all knocked off. I'd say it? he'd be rusty, but fast rusty. <laughs> and he was. This kick. Ray Butler again, six yards deep. This one he decides to bring. Butler. the 40 to the 43 yard line 50 return 43 yards is what he officially gets but you tack on the six in the end zone and he took it almost half the length of the field well his whole team was saying stay in there stay in there stay in there Ugh, here we go let's run let's go jarzinka says oh i gotta throw a block and he <laughs> and got he, one there he, did. he got a half of one there and then he got two more there from jarzinka nice play and it's exactly what the huskies need watch little joe 
Jarzink, the smallest guy on the team. Boom, got one there right in the head. Yep, and then he comes downfield and gets another one. So, good starting field position for the Huskies from the 43 yard line. Hewer, quick drop, now takes off on his own. Get positive yardage, picked up four. Eric Johnson tracked him down. He didn't talk two seconds, but he got a pass rush. to Nebraska territory for the first time today for Washington. And there's Maurice Shaw on the season, only 3.1 per carry. Two yes, Sopo has snuck into the game, Brad. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on number 11 to make sure he doesn't sneak in so you can't see him at home. And you know what? For him to sneak in, I think he's going to have to change numbers. That's right. Nebraska's well aware of this guy. There will be times when Tuya Sosopo and Heward will be both in the lineup. They're both quarterbacks, but Marcus is a tremendous runner. His career high day came last year after Heward's injury. As you see the numbers, 270 and 2 against this very same Nebraska team. Now he comes back out. And Brock Heward looks to the sideline for the call. First down at the... 46 yard line. This is where Washington and especially Brock Hewitt has to tell his team, let's settle down, let's make first downs. Don't look at the scoreboard. Let's just make first downs and get the crowd out of this thing. Looker in motion. Hewitt steps up in the pocket over the middle, delivers it to Jawan Hooker, and he goes down to the 31 yard line. 15 yard pickup, Jawan Hooker last year, Washington, first down at the 31. To the top of your screen. No one's covering Reggie Davis down the middle, number five. Tuyasa Sopo in motion. They fake the end around handoff. Now Heward's got a lot of room in front of him, and he throws complete to Hurst at the 34 yard line. Well, a lot of smoke. Not pass off the reverse. Willie Hurst, the freshman, stays in there after that catch at the tailback spot on second down of 13. Looker in motion. Heward, look out. correct here. There's no doubt that Brock was trying to throw that ball to save yardage. He made no attempt to complete that ball. The officials will gather and talk about it, but here's another look. This is not the pro game. In the pro game, if you're outside of the tackle box, you can do this. This ball was thrown, obviously, to save yardage, and that was the correct call. Brock may get away with that next year That's if he chooses right. <laughs> not to come back to Washington. Or, or he could have got away with it this year had he tried to do it. you got to go, go to the next step higher. But Jim Lambright can argue all he wants. They're going to stick with this call. That was the correct call. That's the single, Lambo, but you're not arguing against it. <laughs> That's the second time we've seen Jim give that signal, that he's not too crazy about the officiating. Well, Washington has a drive going. It's just in the wrong direction. They've driven back to their own 46. It's third and 33. There aren't a lot of them in the playbook for this. Five wide receivers. The same to Warren Long, don't you? I'd say. They're all out there. Garzink is in the group as well. They're thinking about a shovel pass. They throw to the middle of the field. Another flag goes down. And a second flag goes down. They're going to get roughing the pass at that time. Brock Heward was roughed up by BYU last week. I think it was Julius Jackson, number 50, who came in and hit Heward. They were going to try the shovel pass, and he had to double clutch it because it was covered. I wonder if there's more than one penalty I here. Thought I thought there was. I thought there was two different flags. Dead ball. False start offense. Oh, boy. Disregard the second play. So, before the snap, there was illegal procedure called. Did not see it. The only thing it. I can think of is not enough linemen on the line of scrimmage. I don't think they had seven guys up there. Exactly I, it it right. looked like it was a pretty thin pickings on the front line. And then he was hoping for the personal foul <laughs> for roughing the passer. And he said something to uh, the guy that hit him. It's all for naught because that five-yarder overrode what would have been a roughing right. the passer penalty. It was a legal, illegal formation. Still third down in a mile. Third and 38. From the 41, play action. Heward, get as he throws. He's going deep. He's got a man there. 
just over his fingertips. Laid it out for Gerald Harris, who did everything he could to track down that Brock Heward pass. That would have been huge. As it is, it's time to punt for the Huskies. Boy, that was one of those, and that could have changed the scoreboard if that was thrown a yard less. That's how much Nebraska gambles because you have to get to this guy before he gets comfortable in the pocket. Ryan Fleming, who had a good punt his first time out. That's Joe Walker back waiting for it for Nebraska. Walker will have a chance on this one from the 19. He's got a little alley to the outside. The midfield stepped out of bounds, I believe. Although they're not going to bring it back. I thought he stepped out at the 50. He did. He stepped out and now the, the linesman yep. comes back and makes the call. You are correct, sir. You're right on this. That works. Their own 17. Viewer throws on the run. Man, Looker paid for that one. He got double popped at the 20-yard line. Brad, we saw what the goals were of the Washington staff. Throw the ball under 2.5 seconds. Well, we got a little clock here. Let's see how it's going. Well, that's actually three seconds because there's 30 frames per second. So there's three seconds. There's three seconds again. Uh-oh, this three seconds isn't looking good. <laughs> Every time he throws at three seconds, there's a guy right there on him and a helmet. In his I think 2.5 is better than three. They better lower it down. That Here's half, another one, 3.1. That half second could save you a bruise you for the two. Second and six. Oh, nailed as he tried to throw there by Julius Jackson. composure now and give some confidence to the rest of the team even though he's down a bit because he's not giving time the last one that's almost three seconds again and you can see just as he lets it go he's getting hit this time by eric johnson the outside linebacker right. so 2.5 is the better deal and right now as you said the black shirts they're just teeing up they have absolutely no respect for any kind of ground attack by washington and obviously there won't be a ground attack here in the shotgun with an empty backfield with the exception of the left-handed quarterback. Five wideouts. Heward trying to buy some time. And a man open and he threw an interception. Picked off by Jason Wiltz, the big defensive tackle. Wiltz down to the six-yard line. Yeah, I think he stepped out on the 22. And if only Brock Heward would have known that because he wouldn't have got a forearm in the chin. Well, the big fella who just came back this week, and now you've got a quarterback who's been roughed up and intercepted. There he is, right in here, Jason Wiltz. He's going to rush up the middle, but when they flush Brock Hewitt out of the pocket this time with nobody back, he just kind of runs back and says, Coach told me to follow the play. I got black, so I'm just going to follow the play here. And all of a sudden, the ball comes right to me. And I told Coach I had good hands. <laughs> He had a bad ankle. That's what he had the last two weeks. And they gave him two to six weeks. They said he'll heal. He says, I'll take the two. Playing today for the first time in a couple of weeks. And he's got a huge interception and a big smile on his face. He was a part-time starter last year for this team. Was counted on to be an inside starter. The pails is red and white. 76,372 are here today with us. The 223rd straight sellout. You know what is a bad... Bad open if you're Washington. You've had 12 plays for 34 yards, and you've had four penalties for 40. High short kick. Jarzinka comes up on it at the 17. No cuts to the sideline. A big shot and a late shot, I believe. Penalty marker down. He was knocked out at the 31-yard line. And there's what the offense has done that Gary was talking about. There's going to be some added on here with penalties here, though, on a late hit on Nebraska. Well, interesting, uh, Charlie McBride, and he really didn't dance around it when we asked him. Usually coaches don't talk like this. But we said, would you rather see Heward or Tuiasa Sopo? And he said, Tuiasa Sopo's tougher for us. We'd much feel much more comfortable facing Heward. They're both in the huddle. There's one, and now uh, he backpedals. And the reason is, right now, this Washington offensive line cannot stack up. The personal foul on Jarzinka moves it out to the 46, so a good, good starting field position again for the Huskies. Their best of the day to start a drive at the 46. Shaw back there behind Rock Hewer down. 
Washington backfield. A quick drop, a long throw. And Harris couldn't get under this one either. Covered out there by Kyan Craver. Second and ten. Ewer's going to flare one out to Hurst who caught the back end of the ball and spins to midfield, maybe to the 49. He'll give him about five. Ralph Brown made the tackle. Tough spot there. Ten players drafted, eight of them are still in the NFL. Third down at six. Ewer's going to take off with it. And he's got a first down and dives forward inside the 40 to the 39. Brock saw a little bit of green in front of him and picked up 11 yards. This time, I think it was a called play. The first time in the game that uh, this Scott Linehan called a play. It was a running play all the time. None of the receivers were even looking for the football. Probably was an audible at the line of scrimmage that he could go to if they saw a man coverage. Even if it's just the quarterback, they've got to find a way to get some yardage on the ground to Absolutely. keep Nebraska honest. I really believe it's going to be tough for Washington to stay in this game if they don't get 100 yards rushing in the game. So far, they're not even close. First is back in there, the freshman, on a first down at the 40. Quick drop, quick throw. Looker's got it. And he's two times completed 68. And only gave up three sacks. Charlie McBride says, yeah, we gave Troy Edwards a lot of yards, but if you looked at his stats, and I said, yeah, he's caught 52 balls in three games. <laughs> Pretty good player. Everybody's given up some yardage to that youngster. Heward throws low, and Harris scooped it off his shoe tops, but he didn't get a first down. I mean, they, they, they all run the same. They all look the same. They just keep coming. Big third down right here for Washington. And Tui Asasopo's checked in to the huddle along with Brock Heward at the 33. They've got to get some points. Out of this drive, I would think they're down by 21. Kind of a power eye with Dewey Asisopo now is going to be the motion man out of that backfield. Straight ahead with Conniff the fullback. He might get it on second effort. Yes. Probably one of the biggest plays, biggest first downs of the game. The Huskers, Huskies have to get a first down. You're right here. I think they need points in this game where it's going to get away from them very, very quickly. And they say first down. So Washington moves it inside the 30-yard line of the Rose. Pay-per-view. Ninth play of the drive. Heward, empty backfield, pumps once, flags down, goes long for Harris again, throws it away. And again, a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. No rhythm at all so far for Washington offensively, and that's kind of one of the problems they had against BYU last week, admittedly, though they won that game 20 to 10, they weren't that impressive Red on ball, offense. Ball start, offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. And 15 at the 34. Here they come. Pass for Jarzinka is too far. And Hewitt nailed again as he let go. Julius Jackson came smoking in, and now Hewitt slowly rises. And you see number 50 is the guy that hit him. You talk about throwing off your back foot. Brock's going to be throwing off his rear end pretty soon. And, and it's a good thing he's good at it. He's one of the few guys that actually does with his normal motion is really not to step forward all that much. But in that case, he couldn't. He has to throw that type of ball. Six for 14 in the game so far, and he can't step into those. They're just, it's just too tough. For, he's already took a lot of body punches. And it's only the first quarter of this game. Yeah. One second left in the first round draw play to Shaw. And he's not going to get anything either. It's going to be third down and about 16 to start. A third down and 17 in Washington. Two out of five on their third down conversions today. They've been in this long yardage situation. They're almost getting used to it. And a timeout taken by Nebraska. Think about it. We'll give you some chances here and some time. Every one of them. Every one, my friend. Four years. That's right. We'll give you the answer a little bit later on. A red shirt. <laughs> I think you get that the first day. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of red shirts over there on that sideline. You should see practice at Nebraska, Unbelievable. folks. Unbelievable. There's about 170 of them running around out here. And, of course, everybody that comes to the game is wearing red in some form or fashion on a very, very warm late September day. The wind really hasn't been a problem so far, but, boy... 
It'll blow you away outside this place. Well, it's never a problem for Nebraska because most of the time they're pitching. <laughs> so it's not a big deal. But I, I think the first quarter, let's say that Washington did not take advantage of it, that's for sure. See if the Huskies can come up with a third down conversion, third and 17. Four wide outs for Hewitt. And just outside of the picture is Tracy Winstrom, the tight, the tight end, is also going to finish in front of D'Angelo Evans. How about that three linemen into the end zone before your tailback? That's hustle from that offensive line. D'Angelo Evans looked like they're retaping his right ankle. They may not need him anymore today. Right. Either that or putting their shoes in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's right. Chris Brown set to kick away. Zinka back battles. He's eight yards deep, and he will not bring it up. Evans, this time 19 yards away to get his third touchdown. This is James Sherman right here, the right guard. He's going to score with a great block right there at the end of the play. There's Gesford, number 72, and just outside of the picture is Tracy Winstrom, the, the tight end, is also going to finish in front of D'Angelo Evans. How about that three linemen into the end zone before your tailback? That's hustle from that offensive line. Angelo Evans looked like they're retaping his right ankle. They may not need him anymore today. Either that or putting their shoes in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's right. Chris Brown set to kick away. Jarzinka back battles. He's eight yards deep, and he will not bring it out. So Washington will start again from the 20 yard line. Well, earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Since 69, what does every Nebraska football player who's completed four years have in common? You got a guess? I, I have bowl games. At so least one conference championship ring, and they've made it to four, four bowl, bowl games. Trips. That's yeah. not bad. That's not bad. 39 straight bowl games for Nebraska. You know, the only thing they haven't put together here yet is the stadium. They're working on it, though. We, gotta <laughs> wear, we had to bring our hard hats up here. They just gave me one with a big and cross I'll, on the top. I'll tell you, Brock is wearing his hard hat out there right now, too. There you see the renovations around Memorial Stadium. It is going to be, it's already a fabulous place to watch a football game. It's going to be incredible when they get it done. They're on a five year plan that's going to make this thing a whole city in itself. Heward goes back to throw and finds Looker. And Looker broke a couple tackles and out to the 36 yard line. Pickup of 16. And Ralph Brown is down after the play. Brad, 
side. You know, look at the expansion room they have here for another press box on the other side. Those lights are way up there. I mean, they've got plenty <laughs> of room for expansion. They could build all kind of things right in here and then kind of go like three levels right here. Danielson, the architect. I can put in about another $12 million deal right there. Well, the we talked to Bill Byrne, their AD, yesterday uh, quite a bit about what they're doing around here, and a lot of it includes moving the baseball diamond. They're going to have an indoor facility. They will have a couple of indoor practice facilities and a soccer field. And we're way up here, and it's going to be a lot nicer press box when we get done. That's me right there. In the we're going to go higher. There's the seats. Right? That's where we're going to be. Yeah, that's where we'll be in five year. years. Yep. I, I got a feeling we're going to put us up there next to Five wide outs. Heward over the middle. Had a good throw. Bush, uh, uh, Bosch, all three of them have been coming around the corner and putting the pressure on. You've been watching Bannon Bosch, and you said, man, this he guy's is a good. Player. You bet he is. True sophomore that they said is going to be the next Grant Winston. From the 45, second down a yard. Heward would drop, quick throw, and a dangerous one. It's incomplete. It was tended. Well, they're going to have, yeah, gonna have all the practice. opportunity in the world. <laughs> And there is a Wistrom yep. on this team. That's Tracy. Tracy, the tight end, was in the last series. He has a touchdown. Catch to his credit this year. 67 yard touchdown. Third short. Got him straight ahead. I don't know. Maybe got it with forward progress. I don't know. That's uh, Eric Johnson coming out of the pile with the football. I think Jake Foreman is the guy who made the initial hit, the middle linebacker. And the Nebraska linebackers, I think that has made the big change in this Nebraska team when they really made the commitment to speed here. Brad, if you look at their linebackers across the board, Foreman, Shaw, and Johnson, they were high school running backs, all three of them. Yep. Both, and they, two of them played defensive back in high school, so they recruited them as running backs and defensive backs and moved them to the linebacker. They can run. Foreman is the son of Chuck Foreman, the great running back first in Miami in college and then in the National Football League with the Minnesota Vikings. And if you think that's a father-son thing, how about this? He played high school football in Eaton Prairie, Minnesota for Mike Grant. You know who his dad was? Wow, I get the connection. Bud Grant. Good football player. He's on the Buckus watch list. Heward, plenty of time for the first time all day, but can't find anybody open. And he's going to go down as Kelsey buries him back at the 35-yard line. Plenty of time, and I think this is one of the, actually the second mental mistake that Brock Heward made in this football game. The other was that interception when he threw the ball into the crowd. But this time on first down, you have to smell out your time. Good coverage, throw it away. You've got to avoid the second and long, second and 17. Just too tough for this offense to pick up. 16 straight games with at least one sack. They have more sacks this year than they had at this time last season when they had Jason Peter and Brent Whisper and those guys in there. So they get after you. They're coming after Hewitt again. Look out. Collision time this time comes from Mike Rucker. And Brock Hewitt again gets some help from one of his linemen to pick him off the turf. Brock Hewitt is earning his scholarship, his books and tuition today. Oh, I think he's got a meal or two in here, too. <laughs> he's having his lunch pail handed to him. I'll Coming inside much. this time, it was Steve Warren and also Rucker from the outside. And I tell you, there, there, there just doesn't seem to be any rhythm in the passing game at all. Fourth time they've had third and 17 plus in this game. They picked one of them up earlier. Going to throw a screen or try to, and Nebraska's all over that too. Kari Reynolds spelled it out, and there's another loss on the play in six yards. This is a fired up defense. Yeah, they smell blood right now. They do not respect the running game. Washington and Scott Linehan tries to go with the screen, and there's that number 83. Hamden Bosch is in there again. And I'll tell you, right now, everyone smells blood around this Lincoln Stadium because the winning game equals a lot of sacks. Fleming will have to punt. Walker and Wiggins are both back. Kansas State team we saw last week. Yeah, there's no rebuilding here. This is, uh, you know, 
Texas has a dip. Michigan had those eight and four seasons. USC went down a bit. Alabama has gone through a couple problems. But in Nebraska, they just keep doing it over and over again. There is no let up. And one of the things I think is trivial to that is the continuity of this office staff here. I mean, they run the same plays that they've always run. football. I don't know if it's 101 or 303 or... Hey, there's Lee Corso right there <laughs> and John Saunders sitting together in that class. You see those two guys? Yeah, I did. They back were copying. In, they were cheating off the guy in front of them, too. I saw back them. in 64, Frank Solich was in an educational psychology class that Tom Osborne was the teacher of. Of course, Frank Solich played for Bob Devaney here in the 60s. Cured. Throwing out to Harrison completely. Well, what's happened now with this pass offense is one sack going into this game. Fifth-year seniors on this football team, and those are the, the last class was the big class. They graduated 10 NFL players off this team, and right now, there's not a lot of depth on this team. Desishur, not Hooker. That was Andre Desishur, and that was a beautiful catch that time. Right over Craver, the true freshman, got bump and run to the outside, and finally kept the ball in the field to make a catch. is a big target, 6-2. He caught 14 passes as a freshman, and then kind of disappeared from this offense. Put the ball up in the air, throwing against the wind. Of course, throwing the ball in Seattle in that stadium over there, that you, you, get, you learn to throw the ball in the wind, so it's no big deal for Brock. First down at the 42. Uh oh, first team's back in from Nebraska. You were in the shot. The looker. Nice move on the first man, crosses field. He's got a first down at the 30 yard line, the sideline. Well, you said it. I mean, not only does he have good moves, I mean, he's a 4 5 guy. I mean, that's fast enough to play in college football, plenty fast enough and is very aware of being able to read the pattern, almost like he's got the basketball weaving and bobbing and weaving and catching the ball. He says he's got great hands. Answer to the Washington offense in the third. Here he is on the slant. He's got it to the 22-yard line. And so now away from Harris and on to look at it. in this game, and that's why there's been pressure on the ball game. Second down at two. tight end Reggie Davis. Why is that, right? Give a little confidence to your tight end, I guess. This is helping your quarterback get to 50%. They're not worried about stats right now. They definitely need some points before They're worried about survival. up Gerald Harris who held on to that ball. Yeah, and that was Clint Finley that time. The, really, the beginning, the guy they counted on to be the free safety that was in on that hit. Finally healthy, finally getting in there. Still not 100%, but it'd be hard to convince Gerald Harris that it's not 100%. Here the ball comes in. Kick oh. comes in right there from the other side by Finley. And, oh, man. They call them floating ribs for a reason. They yes. might be floating around inside Gerald right a, now. Yeah, that's right. They're up by his throat right now. The corner. Nice corner out to him. They have wide open. Looker in motion. See if he looks for Looker. He's not going to have time to look at anybody. Eric Johnson. On the blitz, gets the sack. Eric Boy, that guy's Johnson bad. Johnson is a linebacker. Wearing number 27 is going to come right off the corner right here, and no one picks him up. Coming right off. It's a zone blitz. I'm sorry. He was right lined up in the middle that time. No one picks him up. That has to be his uh, get on the offensive line. That's a complete bust. That's not a hot receiver. And uh, 
play, you got to wonder when a guy comes right up the pipe like that for the blocking assignment. So. Second and goal now, backed up at the 12 yard line. Heward goes complete to Jarzinka. Little Joe tackled by. He's only, you know, 210 pounds or something like that. Third fastest time on the team. He's a 4 4 3 40 guy. He's a glorified kind of a fifth back out there. But he comes. Third down and goal. Tenth play of the drive from the six. Again. The throw is complete to Jarzinka. Can he get there? Yes. Touchdown, Washington. Brock Heward nailed again by Eric Johnson. But a six yard touchdown pass to the littlest Husky on the field. Same people. He's been effective throwing, but when he moves the ball around, when they rush the ball, Nebraska has three different people touching it, and you really never know who. Brock Heward will start things off from the 20-yard line. Over the Huskies to start the second half. Finding himself buried in a 28-point hole. And he, with a quick drop, sets and fumbles. Scooped up by Nebraska. You can't make mistakes. There's another one. It comes on the first snap of the third quarter offensively. And Warren is all over it on Davis. That's just what we said. You can't play a team this good and make mistakes. And just like that, Rock Hewitt drops back in the pocket where he's felt pressure all day. Boom, there goes the yeah, fumble. Again, a, a little bit of a push. No one to throw off of timing. And then Brock got a little sloppy with the ball in the pocket. Had it tapped away. And now a turnover, you can't give him the ball. And as you say, when Nebraska moves the ball around, 29 rushes. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, first half statistics as Gary talked about 261 rushing yards that's a yard more than they had averaged per game coming into this one 328 total the penalty situation awful in Washington's side there and the turnovers as well has made this all Nebraska but they get the ball back to the Huskies Makovic a rare fumble for him tried to throw Rucker nailed him the ball is loose and it is Nebraska football what a disastrous start to the third quarter for Brock Heward in Washington Mike Rucker is the sack leader of this team he is the guy that's lining up number 84 in Grant Wistrom's spot from a year ago and he is the guy that made the play you know he doesn't play a lot of plays he's had foot problems for his team but today he looks as healthy as he's been he says it's my senior season i gotta get out there and get busy he has been busy today Kerry reynolds is the guy that recovered the fumble and nebraska's got it right back well, Brad, we talked at the beginning of this game since the the big loss here that nebraska had you know, you, you, you kind of zero in on what Nebraska did, but this is a proud squad here from Washington, and this is tough to take for Washington. Everyone knew coming into this season that this was a, a year they had to get through. They had that shocking win against Arizona State, but today this is tough to swallow. And Jim Lambright, yesterday you could almost sense that he had a feeling things could go bad. The Huskies have been bounced around and trailed only 2-7. Pick up the penalty. 
Jamie Burrow been in the game all game. We haven't even mentioned him. All the special teams, and then we said we find him when he roughs the punter on the block. He got so close to this yeah. ball. He goes, I got this one. National. No. Oh, that was just a yeah, little touch. That was, that was really good acting that time. Fleming with the Academy Award presentation, but they call it. And. Well, I mean, is there any doubt of it? if it's roughing the punter, it's an automatic first down? Yeah. Even if it's running into the punter, it's right. a first down because they only had fourth down and about two That's feet to several go. Several fouls. The first several foul fouls. It's going to be up, up on the offense and holding on the defense. We had a dead ball foul. This will assess back the previous spot. Oh, man. That's it. That's a lot of penalty. Yeah. Three penalties on one play. It's like WWF football right here. You know, you just, just go wherever it happens. So, walk it all back. I don't know how to get a 15-yard penalty out of well, illegal the only, procedure. The only but, I can uh, think of is that the point of the spot for the holding penalty was five or four or five yards deep in the back. Probably the case. Yeah, yeah. With a 15-yard drop on a snap, you're probably exactly right, my friend. So fourth down, at any rate. And Fleming from his own goal line to see if they give him that same kind of pressure. Nope. They back off, and he hits it off the side of his foot. We just got word that Mark McGuire has hit a home run today. What's that, 67? 67. Oh, he went past my number. You said 66. You made that prediction. Oh, uh -oh. Intercepted. intercepted. Nope, they're going to say he's down. It's Walker who picked that ball off. They say his knee touched down on the contact with Dane Looker over there. And the day continues to get worse for Brock Ewer. It was not a great throw. Dane Looker kind of had to adjust to the ball to the outside. Another one of those things where the quarterback is just hurrying a bit. No one in his face. Throws it low and away. Should have been caught, but... When things go bad, they go real good. On the sideline, Marcus Tuyasasopo warming up. Maybe the quarterback the rest of the way for Washington. At least he'll see some more duty. It's like Lions and Christians, you know? Oh. I mean, okay, one guy's down. Send it to the next gladiator. First and goal, Makovica. Of some young quarterback. Teach him how to play outside linebacker. It's more fun. <laughs> to be the hitter instead of the hitty. Right. Bullseye. Might have a chance to return this one. No, maybe not. Jarzinka says, I'm going to Joe Jarzinka. Across the 20. Broke a tackle. And out here the 30-yard line. Little fella has Washington's only touchdown today. And a six-yard pass from Brock Heward. So Jarzinka's way out there. He's eight yards in this time, huh? Can he take it back? <laughs> First down at the 30 with Marcus Tuyasasopo at the controls now. And the sophomore will give it off to a Brown game that he picks up 14 loss to Nebraska up in Seattle last year. The true freshman went for 270 yards passing and two touchdowns. He's got great wheels. The quarterbacking situation in Washington will be left in good hands if indeed Brock Heward goes to the NFL after this season. Different kind of quarterback, though. Good arm, not a great arm, but can really run. And then when he threw out, uh, wide receiver Todd Elstrom was running in. Third down and nine, draw play. And Shaw finally gets some running room. And Maurice Shaw's got a first down after the 47-yard line. Bull carried by Maurice Shaw. That's the longest run of the day. That yes, it was. was. So, Pac-10 wise, they're sitting pretty nice. Nationally, you know, they weren't in the hunt anyway. So he has a cell phone, zips one out to Looker. Fans will see in the future a guy who can do both. He's got three rushes this year for 61 yards, including a 46-yard burst last week. Here he is trying to roll and throw and being chased. Got away from it somehow. Had a pass tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Chad Kelsey, the rush in. Boy, when things are going right, Brian Shaw was the guy 
Give and chase. Kelsey, the defensive end, comes up with the interception. You're exactly right. Brian Shaw, number 46. Now, get this. He has the all-time best agility run for his position as a linebacker. He chases down Tuyasa Sopo there. It's tipped up in the air, and then Kelsey, the rush end, ends up picking that thing off. Brian Shaw is a 4.0 student. He's a walk-up here in Nebraska. He has the all-time record. Coach with flying colors. He's going to pass this one. He has dominated this one from the outset. Tuyasa Sopo again in for Brock Hewitt at quarterback. Counter to Willie Hurst. And the freshman out for about nine yards. He's going to be a backup quarterback the year that Washington upset Nebraska back seven seasons ago. It's not going to happen today. It's been all Cornhuskers. And now Washington with a second down and about a yard. Their own 29-yard line. Hurst in motion out of the backfield. First man through is kind of the fullback. And First down out to the 35-yard line. You know, I don't know what it is about you and I. Maybe we're in the wrong spots. We've ended up with so many blowout games. Maybe we should switch uh, positions. You do that? Maybe. You take Let's that try. side. I'll take this side. I'm writing on my little instrument over here. I can't. Little, I can't deal yeah, with that. Can go across. Okay, we'll give you one play. A play. Well, let me try it here. All right. All right. I'm tired anyway. 55-7 first and ten. Three outs to Sopo, of course. Started a game last year with Brock was hurt. Comes out with four wide receivers. right there, a little crossing pad, a little drag route we call that, and Chris Juergens well, Let me ask you catch. this, Brad, as a backup quarterback coming into this situation, what are you trying to accomplish? I'm trying to make sure I erase <laughs> the illustrator <laughs> after I put a line up. We'll First go back. and ten. Okay, you got one more play. Yeah, then I'll I take won't it do over. it. It looks like they're going to run a little counter play here. Oh, I'm through close. <laughs> nice block. Whoops, I'm not supposed to say that. Braxton Kleeman picked up eight. You know, there's a theory. Find something you do well and stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we both should. Huh? <laughs> oh, well, we did our best. That was an out-of-body experience, wasn't it? You actually got Washington two first downs. So that, maybe there is something to switch doing. inside. I'm not sure. We have had trouble this year keeping game close, that's for sure. The blowout kings, here we are. We've had some lopsided ones, that's for sure. And uh, we're looking for one of those 20-point games just to keep it interesting. You know, Nebraska, just a much better football team than people thought coming into this season. We ask the Sopo, second down along two. Buys time, goes long. He's got a man. Oh, what a catch. No, not a catch. Andy Carroll had his hands on it. He just couldn't quite haul it in. You know, I noticed the problem was Clint, the, the, the spotter, just backed right off. You know, it didn't give me one spot the whole time I was doing the play by I play give play. him money for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was close. Yeah, he had Carroll that time wide open, at least eight yards behind any defender. Oh, my. To Yasusopo. And his would be receiver. And now it's third down. And a long two. 13 34 left. That is a deceiving third down conversion statistic there for Washington. Quick drop. And throwing behind his tight end, Reggie Davis. Incomplete. You know, Washington's having a disaster today, but they did start out their season winning at Arizona State. Enjoyed what they've seen today. All Nebraska. Tuviasa Sopo on a handoff. Exception is Brun uh, Brunel, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he came from California, but you get most of them right from that great Pacific Northwest. In fact, we're in Washington State. And, 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 you know, the guys they've had up there, they're good some quarterbacks. Pass 
practice at 10 as usual today, and we just got word from the truck that Big Mac, Mark McGuire, has hit number 68. Two today. <laughs> oh, Holy cow. Has he answered the call every you know, time Sosa's made a push? Last time he was pay, he passed him, he went on a tear, and now he's got two of them again today. Holy cow. That is something. I just wish they both end up tied. It would be great. Third down and seven. At the 45. Quick drop, quarterback draw. A lot of room for Tuyasa Sopo. He's still on his feet. Now to the 38-yard line. Good run, 18 yards. That's the dimension he can give you. A heck of a quarterback and is on this staff now as an assistant coach. And uh, listen, it seems to go on and on. Yeah, not only that, but it's Washington. Some pretty good names. It's one thing a 55 to 7 score allows us to do here is just sit here and talk. <laughs> I think they stole the ball, too. Nebraska's got that ball. They stripped it. Lemon, now they're going to oh, say man. Polk uh, that he was down. He wasn't down. I was watching that one pretty close. Looked like Polk and Lohr, Jason Lohr and Carlos Polk took that ball away cleanly. Virtually the same amount of plays. You can see the difference. 469 total for Nebraska. Tuyas and Silpo rifles it down inside the 30. It's a first down toss. Lohr is a true freshman. He's still in there at tackle. Do a little stunt as they try to get to Tuyas and Silpo. He's Aaron at long. And he showed his arm. Him that much almost only one catch and it didn't do much damage that was a short crossing route early yep. in the game maybe a two man shy finally they hustle in the extra punt team member and Fleming to kick About the only thing Nebraska hasn't done today is run back a kick or punt for a score he's gonna get a shot here from the six this is back with 623 left in the ball game 55 to 7 Nebraska Another quarterback in, Richard freshman J.K. Scott in at the controls for Washington. And another freshman, Hurst, gets the call and gets popped for his efforts. Travis Tully made the tackle. Well, if this one holds up and Washington doesn't score, it'll be the most lopsided win ever over a top 10 team. It'll be the 45th consecutive home victory. Right now, that's fifth all time in the NCAA record book. Miami had a stretch of 58 at one point in their reign. An 11th consecutive win over a top 10 team. The previous mark of beating a top 10 team was in 92. They beat Colorado by 45 points. And Colorado, quite frankly, is the only team that's had any kind of success against Nebraska in this conference. And that is their final game of the season on November 27th. You'll see it on ABC. So the Buffaloes and the Corn Huntington State. And if they win that one, their matchup that we'll see next week in Pasadena with UCLA will be a very, very big game at this stage of the season. Blitz on third down. The ball tipped at the line again. And Jeremy Slechta is the guy. It's going to be days like this. He walked into the practice yesterday and said this is a pretty nice place you got here he said to some of the folks from Nebraska and I don't think he's going to think it's the greatest place he's ever played now as he'll leave there leave here on the short end 55 to 7. It was a bad omen when BYU was successful putting pressure on him right. last week. Ball ball ball. Ball. He never found a rhythm last week and he certainly didn't find one today Brock Heward we're talking about. So now we're down to the final minute and a half of the ball game. And their coaching staff trying to say, keep your head up. Oh, absolutely. They got a long season. They got one win in the Pac-10 conference already, a, a game they did not think they could win. So they just got to put it out of their mind and go on. It's not like they're the first team that ever came here to Nebraska. Right. Third down and seven. to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. And a whistle. Oof. You take a shot after the whistle in high school. Broke the record previously set by Barry Sanders. Almost 8,500 rushing yards. Loose yeah. ball at the end of that play. One of those guys that the world recruited in Nebraska 